Hello, welcome to another video. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum and in this video, I wanted to take you guys through uh, basically a couple of images of most of the, most of them are um, based on the Aston Martin Valkyrie and just things that uh, I saw that kind of interested me about that car that um, I wanted to take with me in this journey on designing this 2040 uh, electric car concept because there's just a lot to be learned from this car. So um, let's pick a good picture to start from. I should have put this in order a little bit, but um, the first thing that I kind of wanted to... Um, the first thing that I kind of wanted to hint at is that, um, and let's also start at the nose immediately. So, the front wing uh, that is actually on the front of this car, and to say that a street car will have like a real front wing, is a crazy thing by itself. Because one thing that you have to understand when it comes to the aerodynamics of this car is that it is basically all about creating vortices and harnessing the power of these vortices in different places where. Uh, the car will just benefit from them the most so there's a lot of stuff going on with like hidden air intakes and stuff that you just don't see with this car that is very crazy but to start at the front um here we have like a multi-layer like uh, a little like splitter lip but just multiple wing elements that have like very weird shapes in certain places with uh curvatures that kind of bulge out in other spots and that is just something uh unlike we've ever seen before especially when it comes to a road car this is straight up formula one type stuff so what the purpose of these wings is is obvi obviously also to create their own downforce but um if i just looked into it a little bit further then it's also pretty pretty clear to see that uh, the, the actual creating of these vortices is more important than the actual creation of downforce for these wing vortices. So uh, if you now look at it from this angle, you can see that here there's a little bit of a wing tip, something sticking out, and here you can see it a little bit more pronounced. But if you would look at the car from a straight on front angle, then you almost don't see them because you would see almost like this shape. So in a straight line, those things wouldn't really do a whole lot. But if you would look at it from in a cornering, so let's see that uh, let's say that it is approaching you at this angle. So from this angle, you can kind of see that it is pointing up in uh, a triangular shape. Then it will become more of a wing vortex uh, generator. So as soon as it is, if the air hits it straight on, it doesn't really do anything because it's just like a, a, a teardrop shape profile to it. If you look at it from the top. But as soon as you look at it from a side angle and it would kind of go to the air like that, then it would have air hitting it from the front that will kind of need to travel towards the rear, creating it to have like a spinning effect and thus creating like a vortice um, like damn near on that thing right there. And because it is also directed straight towards the outside edges of that front wing, there will naturally already be a vortice created right in that direction. So they basically use that whole section to in corners and also um, just in a regular speed situation, you would have vortices being created that exit um, right behind that uh, front wheel. So uh, that would be right here in this section that it would come out. So they use that vortice not only to uh, shield off the, the, um, the internal side of this rotating wheel so that none of that air will kind of come back in towards where the diffuser section would be, but also at the same time, it is that, uh, that little lip that you will see here is also used to over exaggerate that effect in cornering so this car has been in wind tunnels at multiple angles to see what would happen um in different cornering situations and that is very weird to see not weird but it's not something for a road car so i just geek up after all of these details from this car that every time i just run into something so um that is already like a crazy thing like here you will see that this sloping uh, line here will kind of cause this point to be the converging point of where all of that air will kind of merge together again so you will have like a, a, a high air pressure zone coming from here and then a low air pressure zone from the, the vortice behind it so again this will also then create like a tip vortice which then will be captured by this shape to kind of keep that vortice um, under the floor of the car right here to keep an air separation so that no outside air could also come inside so you would 
across the floor you would kind of have a maintaining fortice that will be some sort of like an air barrier layer that will close off all of the air that will try to come underneath the car towards those diffuser tunnels and again that's a crazy principle that we have not ever seen before in road cars and not even in formula one because they're not even allowed to have any type of body panels behind the wheels like that so that is again like one of those crazy things about this car so um this is another detailed shot of just the um the the wing it by itself the front wing and here you can again see that these um, wingtip generator, the fortress generators kind of end specifically in a place where um, that it will kind of shoot a fortress on the inside of that wing and it will kind of be then guided to, um, and yeah, and it will just be guided with these wing patterns to go around the wheel but kind of shoot out at the back end of it again. And there's a lot of fairy trick stuff going on with this car and it's just, mind blown to see that this is road legal so also on the front you will have uh on on the inside i should say from the wing you will have wingtip vortices being created but which will be shot into the big diffuser tunnels that you have on the back so that will kind of start the effect of the rotating air which will kind of act as if it were like two big tornadoes underneath the car that will literally like bit of because of the opening in the ground suck the car to the ground with an immense amount of force so that is what you would be able to see here so those wingtip vortices would come out in this section and that is why you also don't see any diffuser rakes in um this actual diffuser it's completely open it will stay that way and uh let's see if we have another car like this is a 765 lc mclaren here you can see that with the diffuser there's a lot of like vertical planes that are standing up right there that is to kind of keep that air flow uh going um going you know in a in a straight line instead of all of those air flows kind of converging towards the center because that is what you would regularly see if you didn't have these planes in there and with like a valkyrie you don't really have any type of problem like that because it is about creating rotating air instead of creating air that is going straight so that is why you don't have any type of diffuser strikes in there so that is uh it's it's a very weird thing to look at but i really like it so um another thing that is weird about it is the cooling because where does all of that air gonna go so you have an air intake that is sitting I think this right here is also an air intake so you have one that is kind of sitting here but i think this is the main one so you can't really see it because it's hidden underneath the body of the car but it is kind of uh underneath the door because this will only be the door panel and then you can kind of see a little bit of like a, a l shape going on in here which would kind of lead to an air intake if you if you if you would ask me i think that is what it would would be it but Usually on these mega super hyper cars, you would see like one massive air intake on the side and then there's another one because you also need brake cooling. And then on the front, they still have a bunch of radiators. And of course, with the center, this car would be uh, also twin turbocharged. So you would need to have some intercoolers and you would need also to have extra cooling because with the turbos, you're kind of slowing that exhaust gases down and keeping that heat inside that package. So the turbos by themselves will all already create more heat. But then on top of that, you also have the intercoolers to keep the charge air cool. And of course, with the Valkyrie, you don't really have that problem because it is naturally aspirated. So um, you also wouldn't need like the mclaren has here like all of these massive air outtakes too that you would have the ability to exhaust all of that heat so that is something that you could kind of slim down when it comes to the valkyrie because it doesn't have turbos but it does have also electric power and with electric power comes inverters and with inverters you also need to have a bunch of cooling so um to to kind of take all of that air and to only have this bit of exhaust is a uh, is also like what it has to be formula one tech going on to keep all of that cool because if you have a thousand horsepower usually car engines aren't that efficient if you look at all of the potential energy within within gas how much how much of it it actually converts into like rotating power instead of just creating waste energy like heat is um it's 
it's not really a, a favorable like ratio for the workable horsepower it is most of the time it is about 30 to 40 percent and that is if you're doing a good job and sometimes even with turbos mercedes formula one say that they're now at the point where uh their motors are actually producing like 50 percent of their uh horsepower in into mechanical power that is usable instead of just having waste energy so that is um yeah that is something crazy to think about that the car will produce a thousand horsepowers from a naturally uh, naturally aspirated engine and that it will only have that amount of cooling to it so how that is physically possible i still need to see it but um that's that's crazy for sure that is really crazy so this is again like another example with the diffuser strikes and everything um but that is kind of it with the valkyrie so this car with these diffuser tunnels and the front wing and just the overall top section of everything it should be able to produce like not only ludicrous like tops not top speed but i should say like uh lap records and everything but also like to come close to formula one levels of stuff because if you think about it this car will have about the same if not more horsepower than an electric car like then uh not an electric car than a formula one car i should say so uh i think it will have like about a thousand horsepower more i think f1 cars are rated at around a thousand horsepower so um that is kind of already very close a formula one cars have a legal like limit of weight i think the the minimum a formula one car can weigh is like 734 kilograms or something um so that would mean that this car would be like two three hundred kilograms heavier but with the amount of body work that's on this car and just like in general like the amount of t the the, ton the tunnels that effect it will create I think you will come very close, if not higher than actual downforce numbers on a Formula 1 car. This car, I would not be surprised if this car produces more than 15 to about 2 tons in downforce. Like 1500 kilos to about 2 tons in downforce shouldn't be like too far off the ballpark with this car. Like it is crazy what is possible with it. And for them to say that it will produce like lap times on actual street legal tires with the license plates and everything on it, everything... Uh, and it will produce like uh, lap times close to an LMP2 car. That doesn't make no sense. That is that is crazy G forces. Like LMP2 cars are way faster than any type of hypercar that you can think about right now that's legal on the street. That is not even close within the same ballpark. So I just wanted to kind of uh, pay my respects to Aston Martin, Adrian Newey, Red Bull Racing, and everybody that was kind of involved within this project because like from somebody that is as enthusiastic about car design and everything that kind of goes into a process like that to kind of look at a project like this it's very inspiring and yeah if i would have a head heads off like solid job like it's it's crazy it's uh it's it's one of my biggest inspirations when it comes to like car design and how to make things like finally look and with cfd and everything like this is one of my dream projects that uh yeah that i'm looking at so I can't wait to see like way more videos on it and to see where people are going to take it and everything. But uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Let me know what you guys think about the car. If you like also uh, these type of videos where I kind of go into like depth analysis about different components and what they would probably be capable of. And name a car in the, in the comment section that you would like to see another an uh, analysis like uh, this type from. So again, my name is Shaquille Feldbaum. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video. I'm out.